Next, we want to talk about determining sample size. So when conducting a study, we want to find the most effective sample size to collect. If we collect too few items, the results won't be useful. And always more is better, except for collecting too much information can be time consuming and costly. So we can't always collect more than we want. So if you take the margin of error formula and then you solve for the letter N, just doing basic algebra, you end up getting this formula listed in the box. So what we'll do is we're going to take the critical value for the confidence interval we want, multiply it with the population standard deviation, divide by the margin of error, and then square this whole thing. Once you calculate that value, always, 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 always bump to the next whole number if you didn't already calculate a whole number. So like if we calculate that we need a sample size of 85.1 people, whatever it is we're sampling, then if we were only to take 85 items, it would be just shy of what we really need. So we should be sampling 86 items. Also remember that when we use E for the margin of error, it's referring to the most that you're willing to be off by. Um, and so you'll often hear this amount referred to as what you want to be within. So, you know, we want to be within five people. We want to be within 2%. So finding the magic word within often lets you know what's going to be E in the formula for calculating sample size. So let's go ahead and look at these examples. Problem six. A researcher wishes to create a 90% confidence interval that is within two units of the true mean. He knows that sigma equals 12, so apparently it's a guy. How many items does he need to sample? So it says how many items. That was the key. Even though the question has 90% confidence interval, nowhere are we told to make the confidence interval. The question reads how many items, and that makes it a sample size question. This means we need to use the sample size formula. And so now we need to find the parts of the formula. The first thing we'll need is Z alpha over two. If we're working with a 90% confidence interval, C alpha over two is 1.645. Either we've memorized that or we've gone through the steps to find that critical number. Next, we need sigma, but that's given to us because it's known to be 12. So lastly, we need E, the margin of error. And from within the sentence, it says he wants to be within two units. That means E is two. Remember, within is that magic keyword to let us know the most they're willing to be off by. So we can go ahead and plug all the parts into our formula. And if hopefully you can type it straight through and then go ahead and square it. Otherwise, if you just cleaned up the inside, you're gonna get 9.87 that needs to be squared. And hopefully that felt too small to be a sample size. So when I square that, I get 97.416, etc. But remember, we always bump to the next whole number, which would be 98. And so my answer is 98 items need to be sampled. Let me have you go ahead and work on question seven, pause this, work through it, and then check your answer. Okay, so did you get 50 for your answer? So what ends up happening is for Z alpha over two, you're gonna get 1.96 because you're dealing with a 95% confidence interval. Next, you're going to multiply that 1.96 with the known standard deviation, which is listed as 1.8. You're going to be dividing by the margin of error. And up here it said they want to be within 0.5 hours or within half an hour. So we're dividing by 0.5 and then squaring that. So when the final calculation is written out, although we have 49.787, we bump to the next whole number, which is 50, and it turns out 50 subjects need to be interviewed.